Right, so move on to system configuration. And this is where I'm gonna have to go careful because I'm, I'm not used to doing this. Um, not knowing system D particularly well, so I'm gonna have to read everything on screen very carefully. Um, so this section only applies if a network card is to be configured. Starting with, which it is, I want to get network connectivity. Starting with version 209, system D ships with a network configuration daemon called system D network D, which can be used for basic network configuration. Additionally, since version 213 DNS name resolution can be handled by system D resolve D in place of a static ETC resolve comp file, both services are enabled by default. And there's a note saying if you will not use systemd network d for network configuration for example when the system is not connected to the network or you want to use another utility utility like network manager for network configuration disable a service to prevent an error message at boot so I'm not going to be using network manager uh, in lfs um, maybe something that's used in blfs um, and the computer is connected to the network so we don't do that won't be doing that at all Configuration files for systemd network D and systemd resolve D can be replaced can be placed in lib user lib systemd network or etc systemd network. Files in etc systemd network have a higher priority than ones in user lib systemd network. There are three types of files: link, net dev, and network files. For detailed descriptions, examples, example contents of these configuration files, consult the systemd links. Okay. So network device naming, UDEV normally assigns a network card interface names based on physical system character characteristics such as ENP2S1. If you're not sure what your interface name is, you can always run IP link after you've booted your system. So there's a note here saying that the implementation calls those names to change, which um, I never knew. I thought they were always consistent. Um, it does say that the names can change um, even though you're in the true environment. So I, I've never ever seen this, but obviously it, it can happen. Um, but I might just go with the name that's currently in use uh, by, you know, that Gen 2 is using, which is uh, that there, EMP0S31F6. Um, and if the network doesn't work when we boot into Linux from scratch for the first time, then it'll be a simple case of running IP link again to find out what the name is that's been assigned uh, by Linux from scratch or the UDEV from Linux from scratch. Um, it does say here for most systems there is only one network interface for each type of connection. For example, the classic interface name for a wired connection is ETH0, and the wireless connection usually has the name of Wi Fi 0 or WLAN 0. If you prefer to use the classic or customized network interface names, there are three alternative ways to do that. Mask udevs.link file for the default policy. Create a manual naming scheme. Or in the boot grub, grub.cfg, pass the option net if names equals zero onto the command line. Well, I prefer to use the um, the UDEV names that are created. Um, what do they call them here? Yeah, they are derived from UDEV. So I'm going to stick with this uh, complicated string here. Um, to be quite honest, I can't see there's any real advantage, just as it says, especially if you've only got one network card. If you had two, you might want to consider using the actual names that UDEV. Uh, comes up with um, to be sure that, for example, ETH0 refer to a particular port rather than it being assigned differently, possibly at, at boot time. Although you do with this method, you do specify the MAC address uh, to lock it to a particular name, so that that shouldn't be a problem. Um, but again, it seems to be more work. I, I'm all for doing things simply rather than making things more complicated, which as I said in the previous videos, the, it's one of the reasons why I don't like to use systemd. It just seems to be way over the top for achieving 
um, it's the same result as system V um, so I'm going to use static IP configuration so I need to create this file here and it looks like I need to add the network device name and my domain name so I've copied that so I'm going to edit that file now so it's etc well, let's copy it and I'll have to copy this again before I go into it so I presume I just put the name there without the forward slash dev and I presume this is going to be the IP address that I use here so I'll use um, say 222 for example uh, the gateway is correct for my set setup. My DNS is at .08, um, and it says you can um, have multiple entries of DNS. So you just add in another line here with another IP address for DNS resolution, and I have a domain. Otherwise, you can just leave that. Um, Blank. and it does say if you do have an etc resolve file to not include the dns or domains entries in this file so because it's systemd i'm going to go with what systemd does uh, i'd probably if i was doing this for a system for my own use i probably would use the etc resolve file um, because i'm sure i'd come back in months time or years time to change something and wonder why there isn't an etc resolve file um, if I was using systemd, which I probably wouldn't be. So uh, my domain is mynet.org. So I'll save that. Um, DHCP, then you need to use this format. And if you're using the etc resolve conf, um, there's some information, information about it there. So it says that they're about using these using methods that are incompatible with system D resolve D um, or another like local resolve, for example, bind DN, DNS mask, etc., or any other software that generates an ETC resolve, then the resolve D server should not be used. Um, when using system D resolve D for DNS configuration, it creates a file run. System D resolve stub resolve and if resolve does not exist it will be created by system resolve D as a sim link so it's un unnecessary to create it manually um, and then is how to create the static resolve dot conf configuration if you're doing that that way and it suggests some um, IP some public IP addresses um, Given how Google can collect a lot of information, um, I've started using a different name server, uh, which is called Quad9, I think it is, um, which again is free, but uh, it, it claims to give better security for um, DNS resolution. And you can see for IPv4, it's just four nines separated by dots. Um, I believe that's the secondary IP address you can use. And then there's the two IPv6 addresses if you want to use them. So, for example, I could add um, both of those as supplementary DNS um, servers to this file. like that so um, I presume it uses these in order as a traditional um, configuration would use so if one doesn't work it'll just move on to the next one so configuring the uh, system host name 
during the boot process the file etc hostname user used for establishing the system's hostname create the hostname using the following so i want to change this bit here to something that pertains to this machine so we could call it um i don't know lfs 12.1 for example And do not enter the fully qualified domain name here. It's just the actual host name. Now we customize the host etc hosts file. Has it got an example? Yes, it has. And some information there about um, creating it. So I'm now going to edit that. And make some changes. So my IP address that I chose was 222 the fully qualified domain name was lfs 12.1 uh, fully qualified means i've got to put the domain in afterwards so it's mynet.org um, an alias for the machine will be just the local name and you might even want to possibly put local host in as well Um, IPv6, I don't use this at all, so what I'm going to do is just remark all of these out. Uh, don't use that at all. Ensure that that's not used. Okay, save that. Move on next to overview of device and module handling. So I think this is similar to the System V book. There's just some information there about loading modules. Generally, most modules get loaded automatically. Um, but there's some information there about controlling how that's done or doing it manually. And in particular, if you've got, for example, two network devices that need modules or something else, there's some information there to read. Managing devices. So as explained, the order in which devices with the same function appear in dev is essentially random. So for example, if you have a USB web camera and a TV tuner, sometimes video, dev video zero could refer to the camera and dev video one refers to the tuner. Sometimes after reboot, the order can be reversed, which is not very helpful. For all classes of hardware, except for sound cards and network cards, this is fixable by creating new dev files to create persistent symlinks. The case of network cards is covered separately. We've done that already. And sound card configuration will be found in BLFS. For each of your devices that is likely to have this problem, even if the problem doesn't exist in your current Linux distribution, find a corresponding directory under the sysclass or sysblock. For video devices, this may be sysclass video for Linux video X. And it says here how to uh, fix that basically so that's what that page is about so i haven't got that problem there's no multiple devices like that on this system so i'll just skip over that configuring the system clock uh, this section discusses how to configure the system d time date the system service which configures system clock or time zone if you cannot remember whether or not the hardware clock is set to utc find out by running the hardware clock local time show command so I'll run that. Now, it being as it was a Windows machine before, it probably was set to local time because that's what Windows uses. Um, in fact, it has been set. This is probably Gen 2 that's done this, possibly. Um, it looks like it is the correct time. In fact, we're in GMT anyway, so it is set to GMT. I'm not in British summertime yet, otherwise it'd be an hour ahead. Um, if this time matches whatever your watch says and the hardware clock is set to local time, if the output from the hardware clock is not local time, translate it set to UTC time. Well, as I say, UK and you know several other countries are in uh, GMT time or UTC time, so um, there is no uh, hour shift, no time zone shift. So it's not strictly true. Um, to say that 
if it matches your watch, is set to local time. Um, for maybe 90% of the world, it is true, but not for, as I say, anybody, for example, uh, Portugal, I believe, are in the same time zone as the UK and probably some countries in uh, Western Africa as well, I'd imagine. Um, if the output from hardware clock is not local time, transfer size is set to UTC time. Verify this by adding or subtracting proper amount of hours. That should be number of hours for the time zone to the set time, to the time shown by hardware clock. Okay. So what's this saying? Create the ETC adjust time with the following contents if your hardware clock is set to local time. Right, so this is, um, to somebody who's not done this before, it needs a little bit more information, I think. Um, Right, the time date control command doesn't work in the true environment. It can only be used. Oh, right, okay, so it's a bit pointless doing things here at the moment. Um, so I'm going to have to do this after we've booted. And I'll have to type in these commands as well, because obviously I won't have a graphical environment to copy and paste from. So I've made a note to come back to that. Um, starting with version 2 and 3 of System D ships with a daemon called System D Time Sync D, which can be used to synchronize the time of remote NTP servers. The daemon is not intended as a replacement for the well established NTP daemon, but as a client only implementation of the SNTP card protocol which can be used for less advanced tasks on a resource limited system. So it's enabled by default and we can modify the NTP servers with this file. So I'm going to edit this because I do run my own NTP daemon um, and you might want to change it to a particular server possibly if you run your own one or there's a local one to use. So I believe all you need to do is to put the server in here. So I'll put my server here. And that should be enough. I believe that's where it's put. Again, there could be a bit more information about doing that in this page. Um, I'll see how I get on with the time date control, but it's not exactly clear at the moment as to what to do if um, the hardware clock's not set to local time. Um, but we'll see about that when we reboot and try and set the time. So now we move on to configuring the Linux console. And I presume this is similar to... No, this is slightly different. It was a slightly different name by the looks of it. Um, right. So this section discusses how to configure the system DV console setup system service, which configures the virtual console font and console key map. The system DV console service reads the ETC v console conf file for configuration information and decide which key map and screen font will be used. So there's various how to's there. Examine the output of locale control list key maps for a list of valid cons console key maps. So let's run that and see what comes up. Okay, so again, that's something I can't do until I've got system D running. So this is kind of a bit messy. Um, 
so that's something else going to have to do after I've booted. It's not ideal, this. It, you, I think that you could hope, um, as with System V, that it would, you could set it all up at the outset. Um, and clearly it's not the case with this. Um, I guess we can go with what's in here to try and um, make something up, if you like. Um, so let's have a look at the fonts we can use for the screen. See what console fonts are available. Okay, so these are ones that can be changed usually um, or used usually. Now, I usually find that I think this Sun 12 by 22 is a good one. Uh, I'm not sure about that solar one, if that would be worth trying out. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it safe and go with what would be a standard VGA font. Um, assuming it boots up into VGA, I'm not sure if it would do or not. But I'll go with this Latin 116 initially. And then I'll try using one of these larger fonts because sometimes they don't work. So they've used, as you can see, lat to terminus 16. In fact, I can't see the terminus one there. No, I can't see any of those terminus ones. So I'm not quite sure what that would do. It's, it's not actually there. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it is. Oh, we could try that one, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, I think I'll just copy this as it is. And edit it. And add in some information as it's got here. So example for German keyboard and console is given below so the key map's got DE so that's the German country code so I'll take a chance that um, oh okay you can run a command here to find out oh but local control doesn't work in the true environment again so again it's it's a uh, you know really messy this is uh, you'd expect to be able to run these functions or find this information um uh you know to have it to hand while you're building the, the um linux from scratch system up but clearly for some reason they're not available to work at this point uh so what i'll do is i'll just copy this key map as it is and i'll put that there in the same place as it is but just change this to um gb I'll try that. It might have to be UK. Sometimes it's UK, sometimes it's GB, but I'll see what that's like. Does it mean it doesn't run or? Yeah. So again, that's something I'll have to cover. Um, so now we're moving on to the system locale. So this should be pretty standard because it's all to do with glibc and its functionality. So locale minus a, so they're all the locales that have been installed on the system. So these will be the ones we installed for the testing. And we can check to see that we've picked the right ones. For example, I'll be using uh, these two here. And you can check to make sure using the correct one by putting this in and then substituting one of those locale names. And the response you get should um, tie up with what you'd expect to see. So if I start with this one, for example, and put that into that command, it tells me British English. And likewise, if I put in UTF-8, I'd expect the same response. 
it does. So if I try that with char map, you can see ISO 88591 is the character map. International currency symbol. Uh, Great British Pound, so that's right. And the international dialing prefix to access the UK should come back with 44 or 044. Yeah, 44 it's come back with, so that's correct. So all I need to do is to modify this. So there's no modifiers I need to add. It does explain about how you can add some things, for example, to get Euro symbols. So my char map was that response. So I'll put that in place of this holder here. Oops. And then the language is the language and country code. So that's the response or not response here but this part here of the code so that's the final result press enter so now that etc locale.conf should contain the correct uh, setting Um, it says login shells are often unaffected by settings in locale conf. Create an etc profile to read the locale settings from etc locale conf and export them, but set the cutf8 locale instead if running in a Linux console to prevent programs from outputting characters that the Linux console is unable to render. So let's create that. Now you can modify the etc locale comp for the systemd locale control utility to use local control for the example above run but again the locale control doesn't work at the moment so it's a bit pointless doing anything like that etc input rc file so this just configures the keyboard to operate in a way that's a bit more uh, usual uh, for example to get the backspace working is one of the particular functions and the end key and so on home key etc shells so this just tells any program that wants to know what shells are installed in the system what is available so always is a or should always be a standard shell uh, pointing to another shell maybe um, I believe that was the original shell SH, but it's now normally sim linked to another shell and the bash prompt, the bash shell, which we are using all the time. System D usage and configuration. So there's a configuration file set options for controller basic system D operations. Um, log level may be changed as well as some basic logging settings. So display, disabling screen clearing at boot time, the normal behavior of system D is to clear the screen at the end of a boot sequence. If desired, this behavior may be changed by running the following command. So it may be preferable to have the screen cleared at boot time um, if the system's running normally. In this situation where you're developing something, you might want to see the output of what the boot was. So you don't want the screen cleared or you might want to leave it up anyway normally to see what the result of the boot was. So it's probably better to put this in for now. And if you do need the screen clear to modify this later, uh, presumably change this no to a yes or remove it even um, to prevent the screen from clearing. Um, oh, it says the boot messages can always be reviewed using the journal control minus B command as the root user. Disabling tempfs for temp. By default, temp is created as a tempfs. If it's not desired, it can be overridden and executed by the following command. Alternatively, a separate partition for temp is desired. Specify, specify that partition in the etc fs tab entry. Um, do not create a symbolic link above if a separate partition is used for temp. This will prevent the root file system from being remounted. Read write make the system unusable when booted. 
Okay, so um, personally, I don't think that's a problem having it as a temp FS. FS. I believe that's a virtual kernel file system. So it's probably a good thing if anything's temporary in there and there's anything that may be of a security nature that it will just get forgotten about when the computer's rebooted or turned off. So that's probably a good thing. Configuring automatic file creation and deletion. Um, there's several services that can create or delete files or directories. Um, if the default parameters are not desired, then the file should be copied. Right, so I don't know anything about this or whether it's good or bad to modify that. So I'm just going to leave the default parameters as they are. The parameters of a unit can be overridden by creating a directory and configuration file in etc system d system. So that's if you want to overwrite how some of the services behave. So again, I'm not going to change that. Debugging the boot system. So hopefully you won't need to do that. And there's some information here about working with the systemd journal. Working with core dumps. Long running processes. Beginning with systemd230, user processes are killed when the user session is ended, even if no hub is used. Or the process uses daemon or set SID functions. Yeah, so this is something you might not want if you, as if as it says there, you've got screen running or Tmux. We've got running a session running as a process in the background, and you wish to log off. Um, it sounds like that System D would normally terminate those processes owned by the user when they log off. That might not be pre preferable. Um, so it gives some information about how to control that. I'm not going to adjust this because I'm not really um, that up to speed with System D. Um, it would be a problem for me because I do use System D on some machines where I run it, log out, leave the machine running with a, a program running in, in that uh, screen process. So if it was on a System D system, that would be a problem for me. Um, Being is just a process for getting Linux from scratch up and running. Um, I'm not going to be too worried about that at this point. 